Okay, this how-to video is going to talk about um, AllCAD CIS and, and what the CIS database is and, and some of the options that come with it. So traditionally with an AllCAD capture flow, um, you use the, the place part menu or the place search providers menu to, to get graphical symbols, PCB footprint schematic, um, etc. So I would then find a part in the library, I've got a microcontroller part here for example, and then what I would then do is add properties to this part to drive things like bill of materials and netlist. So that could be manufacturer, manufacturer part number, cost, distributor, all that type of information. Those properties can either be added manually by just clicking on the new property and then adding that property to the to the part in each, each design, or you can add those properties to each graphical symbol. The disadvantage of that would be that, say if you were to add a, a, a discrete part like a resistor, for example, um, let's add a resistor. Obviously that resistor, you would have to have a different graphical symbol for every single resistor value, footprint, part number, etc. that you have. So instead of using um, Peter place a part, what you can do is you could use the, the place database part. This is where CIS comes in. What that does is that you still have a graphical library, but you're, you're limited with the number of um, items that you need in that graphical library. And then all the properties get stored in a Windows compliant ODBC database. So just to go through what one of those is, on every computer, if you go to the control, control panel of every computer, you've got something called administrative tools, and then ODBC data sources, 64 bit. Uh, and under the system DSN, this is how effectively uh, Orca Capture CIS would talk to a, a database. So this Windows compliant database can be anything from a Microsoft Excel file go into a Microsoft Access file. Um, the recommended one nowadays is an SQL database. Okay, Cadence do provide you with a couple of samples. There's obviously the Bench Access uh, 1740. This is the, the default one. There's also a, a component information portal, CIP, um, which is an SQL database that Cadence provides. Um, and that would then give you links directly into people like DigiKey, Farnell, Mouser to get all their distributed data. Okay, So once you have your database there, I can then use place database part I then get the, the database explorer window coming up or the CIS explorer window so I can actually look at all the individual tables I've got tables of all the different parts um, let's look at my resistors table I can go and pick my uh, 0805 resistors and I then get a list of all the resistor information so I get things like a part number a part type a description value PCB footprint schematic part um, and lots and lots of other properties um, if I was to select one of these parts what you'll see is I'm also getting um, a preview of the schematic symbol, a preview of the PCB footprint. I'm getting relational database here, so, so this is giving me links to um, different manufacturers for the same company part number. Um, and all this information can then be output um, as part of your bill of materials reports. So if I wanted to add these parts, I can double click and add these parts, put these parts down, and then if I was to, to look at this one, for example, we'll do an edit properties, all that property information is pre-populated. Okay, so let's just uh, let's close this design. Uh, we won't save it, and then we'll just go and open. Um, we'll close the explorer window, and on the start page, we'll just open a, a, a design that's a bit more populated. Um, so part of CIS, I get um, a few options, but one of the one of the advantages of CIS um, gives me um, more a, a more thorough report template functionality, basically. So. Um, traditionally with AllCAD Capture, I can go to Tools, Bill of Materials. This will allow me to effectively put in a, a tab delimited header and property string. So if I've got manufacturer, manufacturer part number, I can add a slash T brackets manufacturer, slash T brackets manufacturer part number. Same for the header, and then I can output that as a bill of materials. And that would be based on the properties that are on each part. Okay, with CIS, I get a reports tab. So I can then go to CIS Bill of Materials and Standard. This would allow me to effectively access every single property that's available in my database. So I can kind of go through all of these. I've got all the, the relational database properties as well. So my uh, my manufacturer part information, my distributor, distributor part number, manufacturing part numbers, everything like that. I can output that into a bill of materials. I can have multiple templates here. So I've got an engineering bill of materials here. If I wanted to put a new one called reliability, I could add a reliability template and put different values in here. So that could be things like your tolerances, your power ratings, etc. cetera. Um, so you can output any information that you have that's in your database in a report format. 
Um, this will include relational database. We, in this example, I've got multiple manufacturers for the same company part number, and I can actually output that as part of my bill of materials. And I can also do things like bond variants. So having the report template is, is very useful as part of CIS. Um, I've also got part manager, so I can select the design of the project window, do a right click and there's something called part manager. This allows me to do um, a synchronization just to confirm that the, the data in my schematic and the data in my database is up to date and in sync. So if somebody makes a change to the database, I don't have to worry about kind of trying to remember which parts I need to update. I can literally just do a, a, a tools update all part status and that would then update all the part status confirming that the data is in sync with what's in the database. Um, it's also a good way to do things like um, looking at bomb scrubbing, for example. So if I want to look at the number of reels and try and reduce the number of reels on a product, or if I've got a part that's gone obsolete, I can sort by value here. I could say, you know, maybe what I want to do is, is change all these 2K resistors so I could window select them all, right click link database part. That then takes it back to effectively the CIS Explorer window. Um, I'm on a query tab here, so I could say I'm looking for 2K. Maybe what I actually want here is um, 240. Um, we'll just take 249 names for example. That's the value 249 names, not 39. That would then give me a list of the possible parts. I could select the part and then physically do a change and make that change if I wanted to. I'm not going to in this scenario. There's also bomb variants, so you can add multiple um, bill of materials from the same design. So in many instances you might have fits and no fits. Um, different component values depending on where the, the product is going to be used. Um, and you can actually use bond variants to control all this. This means it's one design uh, and you can have multiple bill of materials for that, that single file. This is just a few things for CIS, but it can give you a, a good insight into what CIS actually is.